How's it going? Hey, so my name is Max Dahl. I'm an industrial design student. Um, I've had professional experience as an industrial designer at multiple companies, and I just wanted to show you my workflow and how I approach uh, doing some modeling in Fusion 360 and how I organize everything, and then how I also bring my models <clears throat> into Keyshot 7 and how I approach rendering in there as well. And if you guys are interested in seeing any of my work, I've got uh, my Behance linked as well. And if you're interested in reaching out or learning more about me, you're welcome to add me on LinkedIn. So that's a great way to uh, just uh, get a touch, get in touch and um, for any further questions as well. So let's get started. So as you can see, I'm in Fusion 360 now. Um, I've got the student license. As you guys should know, Fusion 360 is free for students. And so this is one of my models I just um, finished. And so this is for uh, senior studio. It's one of my professional uh, design projects uh, for my senior year at uh, MSU Denver. And so uh, the concept was to design a Microsoft Surface VR headset. Uh, currently a product not available uh, that they offer. And so I thought it'd be a neat project to show some of my modeling and rendering abilities um, and to design a product that would fit along with other uh, Microsoft products. So this is that to start. Let's look over here at the components list. Um, whenever I create a new component, I always uh, do new component. That is a great way to keep everything organized and to keep your timeline uh, nice and organized as well. And so, as you can see, each thing is labeled correctly. Um, I don't have any typical naming conventions. As you can see, I like to keep everything capitalized. Uh, and anything can then be broken into, and you can see the timeline in here as well and so if I do need to modify anything uh, it's directly in the component itself and so as you can see I'm back in the master uh, this is actually an older version there we go so yeah here we go alright so we're back into that final version um, so what I'm going to show you how to do now is export from Fusion 360 and bring it into Keyshot 7 so I typically export for whatever reason. Uh, I like to export as IGIS. I found some of the best results. Uh, naming convention just depends on the project itself. So uh, for the sake of this, I'm just going to keep it as is. Um, save it to my desktop, uh, and it's going to be exporting there. It takes a little, it takes some couple minutes, but as soon as it's done, we're going to be ready to go. So I've already got Keyshot 7 launched. Um, I had it paused. We're going to unpause. We're going to import this. Here's the IGIS. Uh, for tessellation, it's pretty typical to keep it at 0.2. I've seen great results. Um, just so you guys know, I'm modeling and rendering using a uh, Ryzen 7 1700X. I've got a 1080 Ti that's water cooled using a closed loop. It's not custom loop. Uh, 16 gigs of DDR4. Uh, it's the G skill. Uh, so yeah, so I found when I up the tessellation, it can really don't slow down my computer, and it's, um, in my opinion, really optimized for what I do, especially for rendering and animations in Keyshot 7. So let's import that. So I'm going to keep everything uh, pretty standard. I don't typically change anything uh, if I don't need to. So let's go ahead and import. As you can see, every component is going to be imported uh, with the correct naming convention. Uh, I would highly recommend this for anyone who... Uh, is just bringing in different content because you can see over here into the scene you can show the list and it gives you everything uh, with the correct name so you can still hide that and it, just from a, you know many hours work in Keyshot it keeps things very organized so anyways um, as you can see I was in uh, Keyshot not too long ago using the animation function so we're gonna close out of that if you need to bring that up you've got animation right here uh, every time I bring in a model, these are just some of the conventions, but I like to change the perspective between 55 and 70. It uh, gives it a little bit more realistic perspective. Uh, for environments, I'm really prone to bringing in the three panels straight 4K. I get great results. It uh, brings in the lighting environment natively, so I typically go to environment and bring in the color. Uh, I oftentimes do a, just a light gray. I think this helps bring out a lot of the whites and... Um, there's no conflict uh, in my opinion so it keeps everything looking really nice and clean and consistent um, I turn most of these on for the time being reflections not so often and then I like to drop down the shadow as well 
Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to move the model up a little bit to give some more visual interest. Uh, you can see the occlusion ground shadows make for a really nice, clean, professional look as well. And so this is where I might uh, just bring it up a little bit. And so now we've got the lighting environment that I like, that I like to use. Uh, it's put on a color, uh, three panels, and so let's go into materials. And so uh, you've got a really nice organized materials library. Uh, you can either search right here, or if you want, you can go to metals. Uh, for me personally, I like to just straight up drop a material on. Uh, so you can tell anything that was linked in Fusion is going to click to the uh, to the material that was also in Fusion. You can unlink materials if you need, um, but for the sake of this, it's going to be great. So uh, we can go ahead and edit materials. We're going to apply just a little bit of roughness. As you can see, I unlinked the material, so you can see that this now is rough and this is now glossy. Uh, but what we want to do is copy that material over. And so you can see it's starting to be applied. I'm going to see if these are linked right now. So they're not, which is great. Um, so you just saw that, but I went from measured to color. Color is something that I prefer to use. I get a little bit more, um, I guess, usability out of it. Uh, so we're just going to paste these. Uh, drag and drop another aluminum finish. I'm trying to, I want it to catch these really nice highlights, just like some of the uh, real products that you see in the Microsoft lineup. So we're going to go ahead and paste all of these materials. Yep, that's correct. Okay, so that was the easy part. Uh, that's pretty standard. I'm going to go ahead and choose paint. I'm sorry, let's see. Plus, yep, let's do paint. Um, from Keyshot 6 to 7, there was an interesting change between uh, material finishes, and so uh, just getting used to that a little bit. So we're going to try and find hard plastic, hard shiny. Let's jump over to plastic. Okay, so yeah, we can find my most common uh, use of black plastic is in fact plastic, not a paint finish. So we're going to drag that and drop that in. Hmm. Really frustrating that these are all linked. Um, let's unlink this material. Okay, as you can see, it's good. Uh, and then let's apply, let's do a weave. So weave is great. Um, you've got a lot of really nice weave materials in here. So we're going to drag and drop this in, uh, which is great. It applied to everything, which is what I wanted. Uh, you can see some really nice highlights and really nice shadows, uh, but what I can tell is off is the scale. And so I'm going to change the scale just a little bit and the refractive index. So we're going to jump over from properties to textures and to keep this linked, and we're going to close the width. Let's try to specular. Okay. So I just changed the specular finish, and you can see it's a, it's a little bit more uh, more realistic in, as far as size goes. So I just want it to be subtle enough that you can see it in the render, um, and, and it really shows the material itself, which is great. So um, I'm going to paste this as well. Um, so I think so far so good. Uh, really nice material finish already. Uh, the three-pillar environment is fantastic for uh, most applications as far as what I like to use. And so... Um, yeah, let's add a couple more colors just for the time being. I'm, I'm likely going to add uh, PNG assets to these as well to give it a little bit more realistic of a finish. And so I've predetermined that some of these orange spots I'm going to continue to keep as orange. Um, and for me personally, I like to drop any you know similar color or even if it's a different color, and you can always modify it later. So I'm going to keep it bright, but we're going to drop it to nice orange, just nice highlight color. So uh, we're going to copy this over, copy these, and then the last one. Okay, so everything looks really nice. We've got nice shadows, uh, nice material finish as you can see. Everything's rendering really quickly. Uh, okay, last thing I see are these, these little lenses. So let's go to, let's search glass. 
Uh, Glass is interesting. Um, I use it for different applications, but um, I don't use it as much as I would like. So uh, for this, let's just use Glass Basic. It's going to still give it a nice dark finish. I'm going to darken it just a little bit right now, assuming that, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just dark. You don't have the display on at the moment. Uh, so everything looks good. Everything's finished. Um, and then let's go ahead and add a PNG as well. So I don't know if you guys have done this or not, but I'm going to give you a quick tutorial. So we're going to edit material, go to textures. Uh, textures, I'm just, just playing. That's actually not it. Labels is what I meant to do. Um, so you've got our window. It pops us up. Uh, I know that everything is in here. We're going to go to Pro Studio, VR Project, PNG Assets. These are different assets that I've saved. And there's the lens that I've modified in Photoshop. So pasted it here. We're just going to have to click. And then it, it really scales nicely in Keyshot 7. So, uh, so there it is. Uh, it's in a great place. It scaled correctly, which was nice. Um, so there's a nice little camera. We're gonna we're gonna edit this label again. Everything's good to go. Let's see, it's still there. Okay, great. So I wanted to make sure there was a linked material. So I'm actually gonna instead of duplicating, I'm just gonna add another texture. Um, I've noticed when it's on the same uh, material, it can get a little little finicky. So I'm just gonna scale that back into place. Uh, just be patient with labels and key shots sometimes it can be uh, quite a headache so um, I'm happy with that I'm happy with the way that the highlights look uh, pretty simple really great way to add uh, some uh, visual interest into your models as well so I'm happy with this I'm happy with uh, all the camera settings as well if we want we could add a depth of field so to give you guys a quick tutorial on that, we're going to turn on depth of field and then select focal point. And so this is a really neat way to give just an even more dynamic um, image. So I don't know how well everybody knows uh, photography, but um, f-stop is a great way to um, determine the amount of depth that is in focus. So um, I like to work small and just work my way up. So 6 still looks very shallow. Let's jump it up to 10. And I've also found if the model has been has been modeled correctly to scale, uh, the f-stop in Keyshot is far more optimized for um, for the result. So um, I'm happy with 10. I think it does look good. I'm gonna try and line this up a little bit more and then reconfirm f-stop. Uh, so it looks good. Let's try that. I think that looks a little bit better. So let's click. Good to go. I've just set this nice camera point. You can always um, provide a little bit more visual interest. I think it depends on the application and the model, but uh, having a depth of field that's placed in a an environment that's a little bit or a point that's a little bit farther can look uh, very dynamic as well. So, uh, for the sake of this, we're going to keep it here on the camera. And this is a really critical point, and I get asked this a lot in class um, when it comes to rendering. Uh, but this is just the way to, that I like to render things out and some of the dimensions that I do so uh, folder it, it typically defaults to keyshot 7 uh, folders but I like to just send it right to the desktop um, I'm going to talk about alpha transparency in a different video but we're going to do JPEG layers and passes I keep blank um, 600 dpi depending on the type of processor you have uh, can be pretty high uh, for this for the sake of this I think 500 is going to be a great uh, great finish it's going to render pretty quick and then depending on if this is for a presentation or um, for print, uh, your resolution is going to change. But I like to typically render um, just a little bit overkill. I think that allows me to render down, or I'm sorry, not render down, but edit uh, a lot more um, efficiently. And there's a lot more data there as well. So we're going to render 3840 by 2399. And this is based just on my... Uh, my window size itself. So you can change that in the image and the resolution landscape. And then if you want, you can always change these here as well. So um, we're going to render this as is. Everything looks good. Uh, let's do uh, let's do VR1. All right, let's go ahead and render this. So it makes the window nice and big. Let's see, while this is rendering, I'm going to scale it down a little bit. Um, and so what's interesting is having 
uh, not used up the field in a couple of my renders lately, I forget that it really does slow it down significantly. And so now that I can see this for the sake of the video, I'm going to actually stop this, turn off depth of field, and we're going to render this at a much quicker pace. I'm going to keep the same, uh, same results, but uh, you can just see how much quicker it is. Uh, so this is a great time to not only look at your model and see if you like that the way the materials finish, like I would probably go back and scale this and then apply um, a deeper uh, bump as well. So uh, let's see how this goes. The PNG asset looks nice. Uh, shadows and highlights are looking good. I'm happy with this material finish. Um, so looks fantastic. If you guys have any questions or anything that I didn't cover, feel free to leave a comment below. I'd be happy to address it. Um, yeah, I typically model in Fusion 360. I came from a SolidWorks background. I've used uh, Google SketchUp for many years. That's kind of the first modeling software that I used. I've used Rhino, um, some some other pieces of software that I'll talk about in other videos. But uh, yeah, I found just being in the industrial design department um, for my workflow, Fusion 360 has been fantastic. I get wonderful results. So uh, we're just going to let this finish up. As it's rendering, I'm going to continue to look at the materiality, see if the material finish looks good. I like some of these highlights in here. This is this is right here where you can see why I added a light gray. Um, I referred to this earlier in the video, but if you've got a gray and then you've got your really bright whites, it allows you to see uh, all of your highlights and all of your dark materials as well with a generous amount of contrast. So, all right, looks like it's about to finish up. Um, Really loving the way that the light is captured. I've rendered this model uh, a lot, and so um, I can show you some of the animations that I've done as well. And if you guys are interested, I'd be happy to show uh, an animation tutorial as well, which is something I'll likely do. So as you can see, it's finished. Um, so I'm happy with that. We're going to go ahead and pause this. I'm going to pull up that render. Let's scale it. Okay. So I think it looks really nice as you can see good good depth it looks a little um, there we go okay we're gonna scroll back a little bit just to, just to make sure it looks really good so you, and then just so you guys know I'm using a um, Samsung 49 inch ultra wide this is a fantastic monitor it was a little pricey and I kinda thought I was gonna return it initially but I would highly recommend for anyone that does any photo or video editing especially it gives you a ton of uh, real estate and so this window that I'm using is still about 30% smaller than my actual viewing size. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that product uh, in a different video. But um, So this is the final result. I'm going to be covering a couple more um, just details in the next couple of videos. But thank you guys for watching, and um, I hope you take a look and subscribe and look at some other videos. So thank you guys. Bye.